repairing a steam water pump in the workshop. This was a surprisingly difficult job. The steam powered water pump is very small indeed and I received it in a semi dismantled state. Some of the fixings were really tiny like the brass securing bolts which were 12BA I think. So I was extra careful not to drop them on the floor. The pump arrived packed in this very expensive looking box. So what is it? Well the title suggests that it's a steam powered water pump. But it doesn't work very well. It certainly didn't work at all with the original o-ring in the water piston which was neoprene and thoroughly worn out. I changed this for a half inch diameter silicone o-ring. Which is a perfect fit, it's not a tight fit in the bore but it touches the sides and I'm sure it's going to work okay. What do I know about this small water pump? Well, and nothing at all. I think it's a proprietary model. I don't think it's homemade. And it's very well made. This clip clearly shows the new half inch silicone o ring fitted to the water piston. There is, however, a problem in this clip that I can see. When the water piston was separated from the main mechanism, part of the gasket fragmented. And I don't really want to make a new gasket. So this is how I got around the problem. First of all, I smeared the gasket on the main mechanism with some Loctite 542, which effectively repaired the gasket. It's a hydraulic sealant, and once it's in place, it will be fine. Then I scraped off the gasket material from the water cylinder. Then I used my whetstone to make sure that the water cylinder was perfectly flat. This took quite a while, but in the end, it was a perfect finish, and it should give a good seal. The small amount of Loctite 542 smeared on the original gasket on the mechanism should ensure a perfect seal. These are all the other parts of the pump that were in a plastic bag in the box. Obviously the two stainless steel balls are for the inlet and outlet valves. Just look at the size of the fixings. The very small slot headed bolts you can see that are made from brass are to hold the end covers in place on the shuttle valve housing. I really am worried about these very tiny machine screws because if I drop one on the floor I can't use my magnet to pick it up. My working limit is 10BA, I think these are possibly 12BA and they're far too small for my eyesight these days, even with a magnifying headset. I can't say I'm too impressed with the quality of the soldering on the main body of the pump, but I'm sure it doesn't leak, so that's all that we need. Now it's time to hold my breath and hope that I don't get a muscle spasm as I screw these very small slot headed bolts to secure the end caps on the shuttle valve chamber. A while ago I bought a really good and really cheap screwdriver set. It's not one of those small boxes full of very crappy little screwdrivers. This is a proper thing, and it takes bits, as you can see here, there's one on the bench. I found out that one of the smallest bits that came with this screwdriver set was ideal for lining up the holes so I can screw the other one in place with a slightly larger screwdriver bit. Just in case you wonder why I'm working on a piece of cardboard, this is to stop the bolts from flying off bouncing across the worktop and going on the floor. It is a good idea, and yes, just in case you're wondering, it does work. If anything falls on this piece of cardboard, it tends to stay where it falls. After screwing the last of these tiny bolts in position, without losing any of them, it's time for a test run. Is it going to work? And yes is the answer to that question, it runs beautifully. For the initial assembly, I am applying a very small amount of lubricating oil to the water piston. This is just for a test run before I pump water through it. The water becomes the lubricant. There was a problem with the bolts. Somebody's already taken this apart and changed some bolts because these bolts in the bottom are too small. These should be upper bolts at the top. Longer bolts have already been fitted in the top but these need to be for the lower part. 
This took a long time because I could use a nut driver on the bolts at the top of the pump, but when I needed to put them into the bottom part, I had to use a spanner like I'm showing here, and this really did take a while and was very tedious. After doing this, I read another chapter in my book, How to Jump Off High Public Buildings, but in the end, I pulled myself together and continued with the job. As you can see, the black bolts, which are the short ones, are now in the top, and the shiny bolts, which are the long ones, are in the bottom, holding the entire assembly together. Time to test it. The pump runs beautifully, very smoothly, but I need to test it pumping water, which is what it's supposed to do. This was a simple job. I just immersed the water inlet in some water, applied some compressed air to the pump, and off it went, pumping the water very well, and it pumps at a high pressure, so there's nothing wrong with this at all. After a test run at various speeds and pressures, everything was working fine. So I removed it from the tub of water just to dry it out. Believe it or not, it took me two and a half hours to fix this pump. And I wasn't being slow, that's just how long it took. All these clips are very much shortened from what they were originally. But it's worth it, the pump which didn't work at all now works perfectly, even at very slow speeds. I found some union nuts and union cones that fitted the pump. The small ones are quarter by 40 for 5 30 seconds of an inch or 4 millimeter pipe. And the exhaust union nut is 3 8 by 32. And the exhaust union cone is to take a quarter inch pipe. And that is it. My friend's coming to see me tomorrow to pick up the pump and a condenser as well. And I'm quite looking forward to his company because he's a very interesting chap. And that's it for this one. The pump is back in the box, but this time it works. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.